Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the concept of automatic negative thoughts, which is something that comes up in the treatment of depression, specifically the treatment of depression by cognitive behavioral therapy. I think this concept, though, is pretty relevant and broadly applicable, and I think that becoming aware of it and thinking about it can help people of all sorts, including people who aren't necessarily struggling with depression. Because I've noticed that the same idea comes up in all sorts of aspects of life. So what is an automatic negative thought? Basically the idea is that as you're going through the day, you do all sorts of different things, and your brain is continually generating a narrative about what's going on. So it could be anything, like you could be sitting around and thinking about what you're going to do for the day, you could be in bed, you just woke up and you're having a series of thoughts. So for example, you just woke up and you might think, mmm, I don't want to get out of bed, or you might think, wow, I'm late, I really need to do something, whatever. There are all these thoughts in your head. And you go through the day and you do various things. So like, you're walking down the hall at work, and you see a coworker, and you have an interaction with them, and you might think, wow, that person was really friendly, or you might think, that person didn't seem to want to interact with me, depending on both how the person acted towards you and how you interpreted it. And like, maybe you're in school, and you, you get a test back, and it has a particular score, and maybe you're like, wow, I did great, or wow, I did terrible, whatever. These are thoughts and your brain is full of them, and you're probably not consciously aware of all of them. A lot of them sort of come in and out of your head before you're even aware that you had them. Like, our brains often run really, really fast, and it takes a lot of effort to become consciously aware of these thoughts. So what is an automatic negative thought? An automatic negative thought is a thought where it comes into your head, and it comes in your head kind of unprovoked or unwarranted by the situation, and it's negative. So, for example, say you're sitting down to do some sort of task. It could be you're doing your homework, it could be you're at work and you've been, been given some sort of task to do, and suddenly this thought pops into your head, this is really hard, I can't do this, I can't handle this. That's an automatic negative thought. An example from a social situation, say you go to a party, and you go in, and you don't know anyone there, and that thought pops into your head, you're like, wow, I was invited here by someone, but I don't know anybody here, like all the faces I see are unfamiliar. So that's a rational thought, but now suddenly you have a thought, I don't know what to do, I can't handle this situation, I'm going to be really socially awkward, those are automatic negative thoughts. And they're not rational, and I think one of the reasons that they're not rational is that a lot of the time these thoughts are about things that haven't happened yet. So you're kind of telling yourself a story, or your brain is telling yourself a story about what's going to happen. And the danger here is that it can become self-fulfilling prophecy. So for example, Say you're taking a test, and you get to a certain part of it, and you're like, wow, I can't handle this, this is way too hard. If that's the story you're telling yourself, you're probably going to get flustered, and you may not do as well on the test as you're actually able to. If you can instead tweak that narrative just a little bit, and you're like, wow, this is really hard, I need to focus, I'm going to do the best that I can, that thought is going to lead to much better performance on the test. Similarly, say you're at that party, if you're telling yourself, wow, I don't know how to handle this, I'm going to be really socially awkward, how do you think you're going to act? You're probably going to act pretty socially awkward. If on the other hand, you're like, wow, there are all these new people, this is kind of exciting, I can meet some people, um, and I don't need to worry because eventually I'll find the people who invited me here, maybe I can ask people, hey, is so-and-so here? If you have that kind of thought process, you're probably going to handle the situation a lot better. Changing your thought process can take a little bit of work, but I actually find that it is the easiest stage 
of personal growth. I find that for me, one of the hardest parts of it is becoming aware of these automatic negative thoughts. Most of the time, I'm not even conscious of them. Like, I go into the party, and I feel awkward, and I feel uncomfortable, and I don't know why, and I don't necessarily have the ability to articulate that I had this thought process of like, almost panic, where it's like, wow, I don't know anyone, I'm going to be awkward, and so on, and then that, that sort of leads into awkward behaviors. And for me, becoming aware of that was probably 90% of the work I needed to do in personal growth to get comfortable in situations where I hadn't been comfortable. This is one reason why I think meditation can be really helpful for personal growth. Because meditation is this exercise, there are different types of meditation, but uh, I'm talking about like self-awareness meditation, where you focus and you don't necessarily try to clear your mind, but you let thoughts come through your mind, and you focus on being aware of them. I've heard this analogy of viewing your thoughts as clouds rolling across the sky. So you have a thought, and you're like, oh, I just had that thought and you let it go on, and then you, you suddenly have another thought, and you, you are aware of that, and so on. I found that this exercise can be really helpful for building this kind of self-awareness, because you can get into these situations where you're like, you're in a test, you're in a job interview, you're in a work situation, and you maybe have this moment of like, freaking out internally, and you're like, what do I do? Well, that's a time to tap into that self-awareness, which you might have been practicing through something like meditation. Another thing is journaling. I find journaling is really helpful for that. So, um, you're in the moment, and you can tap into that, and you're like, wow, I had these thoughts. Once you're consciously aware of them, it's easy to kind of move beyond them. At least, it's a lot easier to move beyond them if you can see them consciously. Uh, I mentioned journaling. I also want to talk about that. I really like journaling, and I find that it improves my mental health, and it improves my ability to get things done in the world, and to just live in, a, in a, an empowering way. And I think one of the reasons is it sometimes can give me that self-awareness after the fact. So say I was in a situation earlier in the day that I didn't handle well. Like, I went into this situation, and I had a mental breakdown, or maybe I didn't have a mental breakdown, but I just felt kind of flustered, and I didn't handle things as well as I would have liked to have handled them. So then I start journaling about it, and I write about it, and I try to think about what I was thinking about in the moment. And often, I'm able to discover that thought process, to uncover it after the fact. And sometimes when I write these thoughts out on paper, they are plainly ridiculous. Um, and just seeing them written out on the paper makes it easier for me to move beyond them, and less likely that I have them in the future. One of the things that cognitive behavioral therapy has taught me, and I've done this both through going to a therapist and through self-help books, one of the things it's taught me is that if you can become more aware of those automatic negative thoughts in the moment, that awareness alone gives you power over them, and it reduces their power over you. So there's this exercise of like, counting the number of thoughts, like if you have some sort of smartwatch or Fitbit or something that allows you to like, tally something, you can even get mechanical counters that like, you just click them, and it tallies it. Just the act of counting the number of negative thoughts that you catch in a day, can reduce the amount that they have control over you. And it's a little disturbing, because you start doing it, and you're like, the first day you'll catch five, the second day you might catch 25, the next day you might catch 150. It's not that your thinking has gotten more negative, it's that your self-awareness is improving. So it seems like it's getting worse, but actually you start feeling better. And after enough time of doing that, you'll find that even with your heightened self-awareness, the number of these negative thoughts will decrease. So these are some things that I've found helpful. They've been critically helpful for me in overcoming depression, but they've also been helpful for things not related to depression, like interpersonal interactions, ability to get work done in the workplace, ability to have a more positive attitude towards classes in an educational system, 
all sorts of things like that. I think this stuff can help everyone, so yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Does this resonate with you? Do you have any experience with this? Have any of these things worked or not worked? Do you have any more advice to add? Yeah, please let me know. And as always, I love when people subscribe to my channel. I talk about all sorts of things, so if you like the way I approach things, please subscribe. Thank you.